And this week, we are really fortunate to have Cindy with us. And Cindy was unexpectedly laid off and founded a marketing group. She authored the book, Following My Dreams, Fighting Through a Chronic Disease. And she is a 25-year award-winning marketing professional and speaker. I met her yeah. because she has a really big group on Facebook called Supporting Small and Local Businesses Everywhere. We let Cindy take it away. Thank you, Gail. I'm super excited to be here. I really appreciate the opportunity. I appreciate you being flexible with me. I was supposed to do it last week. I um, was fortunate last week to be at a, a women's conference, and I was speaking there, so thanks for your flexibility. I'm super excited to be here. As Gail said, yeah, I have uh, 25 years of marketing and communications experience. Started out as a reporter for CBS, did that for six years um, before I sort of switched gears and went into marketing, where I've been now for the remainder of my career. Um, as Gail said, I was um, unexpectedly sort of had the rug pulled out from underneath me and laid off like many of us are back in um, 2019, right before the pandemic. And so I decided, why not try out and go out on my own? And so that's what I have done. I have a new marketing group, which is my boutique marketing agency. And as Gail said, um, as because of the pandemic, I noticed that me being a small business, many of my friends being small businesses that I, they, you know, so many businesses were closing down, so many businesses were being impacted. I wanted to do something. And that's why I decided to start the small and local, supporting small and local businesses everywhere Facebook group that grew to 20,000 members within the first six months. And it's still growing strong. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But today, um, Gail has asked me to speak about Facebook Lives, which is something that I use a lot in my everyday life. Um, I use it really almost every day. I'm going to try to get this to work. Um, almost every day, it seems like I'm using Facebook Live. So we're going to share my screen. So because I can't see anything but my PowerPoint, I'm going to ask that you guys hold questions. We'll have plenty of time for questions at the end. So I can't really see anyone. So if you guys could just, like I said, hold questions, we will take your questions at the end. And I can talk about this Facebook Live. I'm happy to talk about how I grew my Facebook group to 20,000 members or anything else that you guys want to know about. So let's get started with Facebook Lives. So if any of you know me as a marketing professional or have sat through any of my classes, you know I am a huge stats person because you can't argue with stats, right? Stats tell a picture for you, and they're so important. So I thought it was really important to start out with some, this says social media stats. I should have changed that to Facebook Live stats. I apologize. So in regards to Facebook Live, Facebook Live video view count in 2018 climbed to 2 billion. In 2017, one out of every five Facebook videos was a live broadcast. I have to tell you, these were the latest numbers that I found. I could not find anything later than this. Um, so I took the latest numbers that I could find. Um, in 2018, the number of Facebook Live, like I said, reached 3.5 billion. The daily watch time for Facebook Live broadcasts quadrupled in a single year. So if that doesn't tell you how important and how many people are using Facebook Live, I don't know what does. Facebook Live videos produce six times as many interactions as traditional videos. I say this a lot as a marketing professional. Videos are by far one of the strongest ways for you to communicate with potential clients to potential colleagues. People don't want to sit and read a lot of text. They want to hear you. They want to see you. They want to feel as if they can trust you and your brand. And one of the best ways to do that is through video. And obviously, when you're going live, it's even better because, hey, People can make mistakes. Dogs can bark. People can come to the door. And that just makes you even more sort of a realistic person. Hey, I'm real. Mistakes happen. And people really actually like that. This is why I tell people when I'm training people all the time, I do a lot of media training. Hey, you make a mistake. You say something that maybe you didn't mean to say if you're doing a live interview. It's okay. Take a breath and start over. It's not the end of the world. People do it all the time. So Facebook Live videos get 10 times more comments than regular videos because people are watching them, because people are interacting with you, right? When you're on a Facebook Live, you can say, where are you from? Where are you watching from? I'm, I'm, I'm in Atlanta. Tell me where you guys are from. The weather here is so cold. 
how's the weather where you guys are? What's it like in Oklahoma? What's it like today in Maine? Where, what's it like where you guys are? And so you can really encourage that interaction with um, people who are watching, with your audience members who are watching. Facebook Live search popularity increased by 330% in just one year. That number is mind boggling. Again, just proving to you how many people are using Facebook Live. And Facebook Live users watch Facebook Live videos three times longer than pre-uploaded videos. Again, they're getting to know you. They're getting to see your personality. They're saying, hey, this is live, right? This is, I'm getting to hear, ask questions versus just where it's recorded. And, and I can post a comment. And maybe she'll see it in a little bit. But it's not like actually speaking to that person right away. So real quickly, let's go through how do you use Facebook Live. It's very, very simple. What I am not doing right now is talking about bringing in apps like Zoom, which I'm happy to talk about that afterwards. I did not, I purposely did not put this in to this presentation. Yes, you can broadcast Facebook Lives using other apps like Zoom. That's a second level. I sort of kept this as a first level, how to use Facebook Live. Um, and if we want to talk about that at the end, if you guys have questions about that at the end, happy to do so as well. So this is sort of the basics on how to use Facebook Live. It's very, very easy. It's basically follow proof. Anybody can really do it. You simply go as if you were posting sort of your update and you just hit go live. That's it. And now if you wanted to sort of schedule it for a time, say you wanted to do it, you know, on March 16th at one o'clock, you go in there when you hit the go, when you hit the live. You just put that in there, March 16th, 1 o'clock. This is very, very important. What is the title and description of your Facebook Live? What are you going to be talking about? Are you going to be talking about, you know, how do you grow a Facebook group to 20,000 members within the first six months? What you want, that description is critical to draw people in. Obviously, you want people to come to your Facebook Live. You want people to participate, to ask you questions. And how are they going to do that? Because of your title and your description. That is the most important component when you are thinking about a Facebook Live. All right. Now, if you're thinking of having a co-host, I've had co-hosts before. You obviously can always invite a co-host. You can bring them onto the screen with you. Um, and there are video and audio controls that you can use as well. Um, if that's something that you want to use to bring it in, you know, bring in some music, whatnot, I personally never have, but the options are there if you want to make it a little bit more fun. Um, and there are other tools that you can use. There's polls that you can use. You can put links in there. You can do stories and then obviously the comments, which are live. I love Facebook Lives because of the comments. I love really interacting with, you know, the audience members who are watching. I love having them ask me questions or me ask them questions. So this is why I love Facebook Lives so much because of the interaction, because of the audience. That really is what makes Facebook Lives, to me, so important, so critical, and also so fun. And they're really great to, you know, as a business owner for me, they're also a great way to get information, right? Ask the audience members, what do you think of X, Y, and Z? How can I improve X, Y, and Z? And they'll tell you another reason why Facebook Lives are so important. So before you go live, there are some things to really keep in mind, okay? Now, I will tell you that I've done Facebook Lives for so long, I've been doing marketing for 25 years, that if you start feeling comfortable enough to going live, there is nothing wrong with saying, hey, I'm going to jump on and do a spontaneous Facebook Live just to tell, you know, tell my audience members, hey, listen, this is what's going on tomorrow, we're really excited, blah, blah, blah. Chances are, though, if you go spontaneous on a Facebook Live, you're not going to have as many people as, say, you would if it's a planned event. I do spontaneous Facebook Lives on my Facebook group that has 20,000 members. They kind of know about it. They've come to expect it. And I tag everyone. It's one of the few times I tag everyone in that 20,000 member group because it's their opportunity for me to bring them on live with me to promote their business in front of the 20,000 other members who are in that group. It's free PR. It's, you know, it's like a commercial for them. And so I do that probably once every other week. I was doing it a lot more during the holiday season. But I'm very comfortable going and doing Facebook Lives very spontaneous because, you know, I used to be a reporter. I used to go live all the time. But you want to make sure that you 
have enough planned Facebook lives where you've done all of these first before you start start doing them spontaneously. Okay. So before you go live, you really want to encourage people to tune in, right? You want to get the message out as loudly as you can on as many platforms as you can, notifying your audience members, tagging people so it can get spread as far and wide as possible. So for instance, for this one, I posted it on my you know professional and personal instagram i posted it on facebook both my facebooks right so i talked about it on my TikTok. i talked about it in my instagram so as much as i possibly can i talked about this but this obviously isn't a facebook live but that's kind of tells you kind of it's the same sort of thing to to spread the word about what you're doing if you have emails from your clients or you know potential clients send them an email that's the best way to communicate with people saying hey listen i'm going face i'm doing a facebook live tomorrow at one o'clock we're going to be talking about you know how to i've I've had people do things like i'm going to be demonstrating to you in the kitchen a 30 minute low fat meal and i'm going to be cooking in the kitchen join me at 12 o'clock eastern time and watch me put together this low fat meal in 30 minutes So you put that out on your Facebook, on your Instagram, on your Twitter, on your LinkedIn. Then you send that email out. You send another email out a half an hour before. And you put that out as much as you can so you get as many people as you can. If possible, you want to get questions from the audience in advance so you can have the answer so you're not caught sort of off guard. If you're using your phone, turn on the do not disturb and make sure you have a strong internet connection. I cannot tell you how many times I have been on live or have actually been a part of a live where it's been very, you know, it's cut in and cut out, or there's been a ton of distractions. That's something that you want to make sure is that you're in a quiet sort of place where you've got strong internet connection. And it's, you know, it's a, if you're on your phone, that's fine. I prefer to have them sitting in front of a computer like this. Um, and then if you are using your camera, make sure you have a tripod or something to stabilize that camera so you're not just holding it in your hand. And, you know, we shaky at those things. And then as, as always, as I said before, write that compelling description. So important. Write that compelling description of what your, um, what your, um, what you are going to be speaking about before you actually do go live. And the more you know, words that you can use to describe that, the more words you can use to describe what you're going to be talking about, the better. The more people you can tag, the better. Because if you tag them, they're going to, you know, it's going to show up on all of their social media. So that is critical. Now, here are some tips to keep in mind when you are actually doing your live stream. Make sure that you give your audience time to tune in, okay? So try going live for about 30 to 60 minutes, keeping in mind that most people aren't going to show up at exactly 1 o'clock. You're going to have people coming and going throughout the entire half an hour, one hour, whatever it is that your live stream is. And that's okay. You just, you know, you welcome them or and, oh, you know, glad that you're here, blah, blah, keep going on. Or you don't even have to welcome them if you don't want to. If it's going to mess up sort of what you're in the middle of doing, particularly if you're cooking something, then don't. Just continue on. But know that people are going to be coming and going during your entire live stream. That's just the reality of it. These people are going to see, they're going to get that notification. Oh, Cindy Gers is live. It's going to pop up in a notification. They're going to be like, people who didn't even know it was happening. Let me check in. Let me go in and see what Cindy's talking about right now. Uh, I'm not, I don't want to hear anything about this. So I'm just going to pop out. Respond to or pin fan comments. That's a great thing to do. So people, you try to respond to as many comments as you can. Even after the live is over, go back in and see what comments you didn't respond to. Make sure you respond to those comments. And if you have great ones, pin them to the top. This is really important as well. Say hello to your fans by name when you're responding to their comments or prompt them. You know, hey, Susie, you know, where where, where are you checking in from, Susie, today? I see that you've been on for, you know, 15 minutes. Where where are you calling in or checking in from? Or Susie, why? What? What? In, what what is the reason that you decided to to join into this live today? What are you hoping that you learn? Something along the lines of that, and so that makes them really feel like they are part of this whole presentation. They're part of your live stream, and they want to feel like that, right? They want to feel like you are talking to them. Um, it also encourages engagements, which is a great 
obviously is always a great thing. You don't want to be on a live and just feel like you're only talking to yourself. Again, as I said, share your live streaming groups or on pages and profiles that you manage. I shared this one on my 20,000 member Facebook group. And cross post the live stream to multiple multiple pages simultaneously. You can do this using um, different apps, which again, I'm not like a stream yard and whatnot, but we're not going to go too deep into that right now. But there is ways that you can do that where you can actually broadcast your Facebook Live on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and a couple of other ones. But we're not going to delve deep into that one right now. During your live stream, embed the live stream on your website or blog. I'm sorry, this should, yes, sorry, this should say after. Um, you should embed the live stream on your website or blog if you have one, okay? Actually, this could be during or after, sorry. Um, because you want to make sure that that live keeps lives on, right? Especially if you have a website. Why? Because it's going to help your SEO, right? The more people who watch it, the more that's going to help increase your search engine optimization. It, you want to show people also that you are, you know what you're talking about. You're a professional when it comes to 30-minute nutrition meals or social media or whatever it is that you're talking about that day. Time limit for a live video session using the Facebook mobile app is four hours and live, like what I'm doing right here on my um, computer, is eight. I do not know why anyone would ever need an eight-hour live Facebook but I do understand that people actually use Facebook Live to sell products or to have a store and whatnot. I, I, I guess that would be how you would need eight hours. But I, to me, eight hours is a very long time to have a Facebook Live. Um, and then depending on the content, such as virtual events or performances, consider encouraging viewers to mirror the content to a larger screen, such as a TV, right? So you can always, on if you have a smartphone um, and you have a smart TV, you can broadcast that to a large TV so they can be even more engaged and more people can be watching your Facebook Live. It's a pretty cool thing to do if you haven't done it. I love doing that. So now after your live stream, make sure that you save the live to your camera roll or somewhere that you can save it so you can reshare that as many times as you have. That was one of the first questions I asked. Is this that I'm going to be doing today, is it going to be Record. It. Am I going to be able to share this? Yes, it is. Good, because I want to put it on my website, put it on my LinkedIn, because I want other people to continue to see, hey, Cindy knows a little bit about Facebook Live. Let's watch this. If I need some information on a Facebook Live, hmm, I'll go listen to what Cindy has to say. See how your live video performed in the insights section of the creator story studio. This is very, very important. One of the things that Facebook is really good about is their analytics. So you should go in after and look at the analytics of how your Facebook Live did, how many people tuned in, how many comments were, where were they coming from, the age group, all of that good stuff, because that will help you as you plan Facebook Lives in the future, knowing, okay, more, there, were 18, there weren't any 18 to 24-year-olds on this one, and that's really my target audience, so I probably need to shift the time a little bit. Your analytics can really tell you a lot. Um, so I highly encourage you, look at those analytics afterwards. And this is just a picture of what that kind of looks like. Now, I will tell you, this is a pretty good, if, if you know, analytics, 1.4 million three-second video views, 121,000 engagements, 648,000 minutes viewed. They got an additional 5.6 thousand followers. Man, who is this? Because I would love, I would love to have this after a video. That's for damn sure. Um, but this is kind of what your insights performance looks like after you in the creator studio. I just wanted to show it to you. This person is obviously extremely uh, successful. You'll see it's 100% organically grown um, video as well. And this was the past seven days. So um, yeah, pretty, pretty impressive right here. Okay. So Facebook Live is extremely important. Why is that? Well, first and foremost, it's cheap. It's free. If you have Facebook, you can do Facebook Live. So you can sell products on there. You can promote products. You can demonstrate that you're to, to your audience, to your viewers, that you are a thought leader in whatever it is that you are talking about. That is really important. And as I said before, these videos live on. So they help increase your search engine optimization. You can post them all over. You can post them on your YouTube, on your LinkedIn. You can post them 
wherever you can make Instagram reels out of them. So they can really, you can get long, very, a lot of longevity out of these, you know, 30 minute, one hour videos that you're doing or Facebook lives you're doing. They allow you to connect and find audience members, right? So if you're posting something, again, I'm going to go to that 30 minute nutritious, you know, lunch that I'm, that I'm making. So if you're doing a Facebook live and you're saying at 12 o'clock on March 16th, I'm going to do a Facebook live where I'm in the kitchen for 30 minutes and I'm going to be cooking a nutritious meal that's under 500 calories that's quick and delicious, okay? You promote that to death all over the place. Maybe you even buy a couple ads on it. Who knows? But it's you get the word out. And you have people who aren't even clients who don't even know about you. And they're like, you know what? I need some new lunches that are quick and healthy. I'm going to tune in and watch. Then the next thing you know, they're your next client. They are like, I want to know more. I want to know more about Susie. She is a really, she knows what she's talking about. Not only is she cooking and she's telling us about what all these ingredients are, why they are good for us, or maybe why we should only use a little bit of this. And not only that, but she's talking a little bit about working out while her things are cooking. So she all around, she knows what she's talking about. I'm going to start following Susie. And oh, by the way, I'm going to reach out to her to see if I can possibly be a client of hers. Maybe she can help me. Again, it goes back to that real-time engagement. This is so important. When, when people are, audience members are talking to you, they can ask you questions, you can answer back to them, and vice versa. You can ask them questions which help you get information about potential clients. Super, super important. Again, it's super easy to use. It's very familiar. Everybody knows Facebook. You can do it using your mobile phone. Um, you can increase awareness and exposure for your business, for your brand, for what your expert teases. And, you know, again, it doesn't really say this on here, but you can do one as frequently as you want. If you want to do, do a Facebook Live every day for a week at 12 o'clock, then you can. Then you can. There's no rules on when you can or cannot do Facebook Lives. Right. So you said for one week every day at 12 o'clock, I'm going to do a 30 minute healthy meal live. Then you know what? I guarantee you start that on Monday. I guarantee by that Friday, you will have the most amount of people watching that 30 minute meal without a doubt, because people are going to start talking about it. Right. You're still promoting it. You're commenting. You're talking to them. You're telling people who are watching it. Tell your friends. Right. So, again, you are increasing awareness about what you do about your brand. And then obviously with that, you can boost what you're selling, your service, your product, whatever it is that you sell. Obviously, there are a few downsides of Facebook Live. Latency is one of them. It can be, you know, depending on when it posts, is it, how long is it going to be out? Some of them only last for 30 days, all of that good stuff. But that obviously is up to you. You can decide that. Facebook has very, very, very strict copyright and censorship rules. Make sure that you check those over. Otherwise, your Facebook Live will be censored and it'll be taken off. And there will be no point in you even doing that. It does lack some tools that can keep audience members engaged. There are some other uh, streaming videos that have more sort of interactive tools like icebreakers and whatnot that can keep your audience a little bit more engaged. But this is what I always say is the host, is the person throwing the Facebook Live, your audience is as engaged as you make them. So you can ask them questions. You can make icebreakers. I've been on some Facebook Lives that are so engaging that you're like, wow, I, I'm not leaving. And people, you have to be creative. How do you keep them engaged? If you're doing a master class, maybe you can say, you know, I'm going to do random drawings. Every once in a while, I'm going to pick a name out. And if you're here, you win a $15 or you know, $10 gift card to Starbucks or to Target or whatnot. So just keep your audience engaged because you say, you know, I'm going to name, say I'm going to name three words, three words, hot words. If you get all three hot words, you write them in the comments at the end. You go in for a drawing. The winner of the drawing wins a $20 gift card to Target. Something along the lines of that. You can be very creative on how to keep your audience engaged. So, yes, they might not offer you some of the tools that some of the other streaming software does, but you can be creative with that. And, again, I'm just going back to what we've said from the beginning, productivity boosts, right? The more you talk to your audience, the more you show them what you can do, the more you show them that you are an expert in your field, that is going to boost your service, your sales. You're going to get more clients and customers from that, period. Um, okay, so um, these are just some 
not additional social media tips. This is my, my call to action. Here are some to sort of summarize it. How you, what you guys can do to sort of reach out for me or to be more involved with Facebook is, as I talked about, I do have that 20,000 member Facebook group. It's really only 18,000 because we're in the process now of scrubbing it, getting rid of members who are not active. I actually have a couple focus groups that are starting next week to try to make that Facebook group even better and stronger. It's been around for three years now. It's time for it to get a sort of a little bit of a facelift. So we're rebranding that group trying to make it a little bit stronger and better, but that is the link to join the free Facebook group. Um, in order to do that though, I do you do have to answer all four of the questions or um, Anastasia who, who takes care of that page for me will not let you in. I will tell you right now, she will not. Um, if you want a little bit more and you are looking for a Facebook group that offers you things like a, every week a weekly marketing session, you can post every week on the 20,000 member Facebook group, like a commercial or an ad, because right now you cannot do that on my 20,000 member group. Um, you can do commercials on that. You can get a free 30 minute one-on-one um, -on -one with me once a month. There's a ton of extra goodies, if you will. I don't even know the word, extra benefits. That elite Facebook group is $5.99 a month. It's less than $72 a year. And there is a ton of benefits for that, if anyone's interested in that. Um, and then you can also take my Facebook Masterclass group. I'm going to be pay attention for that one because I am going to start offering the Facebook Masterclass group again within the next few weeks, how I grew my Facebook group to 20,000 members in less than six months. And I'm also offering anyone who's watching this um, a 30-minute consultation with me uh, to talk anything marketing. So if you are, if you have questions about your brand, if you have questions about social media, if you have questions about content creation, website, any of that, please feel free to just reach out, shoot me an email. That's my email, cindy at cindygersh.com. This is my new website. I'm launching it. I'm sort of telling you guys for the first time. It's, I haven't even announced it. You guys are the first ones who hear it. Um, my brand new website, cindygersh.com. And it has everything on there that I do and more, including my website, or including New Marketing Group, which is my boutique marketing agency, along with all the other classes that I offer and more. And so with that, I'm going to stop sharing. And hopefully I didn't go too fast through that. I feel like I sped through that, but that's what I always do. So with that. I'm, I'll turn it back over to you, Gail, I guess, if there's questions or how you want to do things. Okay, so why don't we ask a question? Jocelyn said, what if you do a Facebook Live and you get crickets? Get crickets? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's going to happen for sure. I've done Facebook Lives where nobody has been on there, and that's okay because the reality of it is, People are probably going, more than likely, people are going to watch that Facebook Live after. So that's okay. So if nobody, if you have nobody who comments, nobody who questions, you just talk to yourself then. You just say, okay, well, you know, I'm from Atlanta. This is who I am, and I'm going to tell you these tips. And you just keep rolling on, keep rolling on. And then you maybe answer questions that you think that they may have asked. So then you're sort of assuming that they're, you know how it says you prep for questions that you're thinking that they might ask? You just go ahead and say those questions that you're already prepped for. So things like, okay, so what would be your number one way, Cindy, um, your number one tip, um, how to increase my Facebook, you know, group to 20,000 members? Then I would, I would say that, okay, so, you know, this is one of the questions that I assume you guys would ask, probably, how would I, what's the number one tip? And then I would just say it that way. You have to expect that there will be crickets. You have to expect that you're going to do Facebook Lives that no one show up for. That's just the reality of it. But also at the same time, expect that, the, that people will watch it afterwards and people will comment afterwards and that Facebook Live will live on. So just because no one's watching it right now doesn't mean people won't watch it later. Right. I was going to say, if you're worried about that, you could have a guest on with you and that way you can kind of like question and answer back and forth. I will tell you that even very established Facebook Lives sometimes don't have anybody asking questions right. most people 
are um, lurkers. That's they right. They watch, but they don't comment. They don't talk. They're like in any group, you'll see that there's like 2% really super active people and about 10% active people and 90% of people don't, do, don't ever do much. They're consuming it and you don't even know they're out there unless you like threaten to quit and then they'll go, oh, please don't do that. And then you know that they were out there. That's the only way you find out. 100% so, true. The, the other way that you can do it if you want, and it's, say it's your very first Facebook Live and you're nervous about it, you can always ask a friend to be in the audience and, you know, they can ask questions. Even, you know, listen, they're kind of your stager. So you say, hey, it's my first, you know, you go to your best friend or your husband or your wife or your cousin and you say, hey, listen, this is my very first Facebook Live. Will you please just watch and ask a few questions. And also that what that does is sometimes break the ice for other people to ask questions as well. Yes, you need a leader. And and actually, I like to do that because I don't like to do video or camp from where I am. I like to be the person listening that asks pertinent questions, that gets other people thinking and talking in the comments. And I like offer, like they might mention something and I know how they have content on that and I'll go quickly find it. And then I'll put that in the comments. And so I kind of like doing that. I got featured in Search Engine Watch, like Search Engine Journal. I think it was Search Engine Journal. One of them recently yeah. cause, because I did that. I happened to see it live. I didn't know it was happening. They didn't tell me. But I popped in. I listened to what they were talking about. I asked some questions, right, and got the conversation going. You need someone. Like a lot of people don't want to be first for some reason. I that's don't right. Know why? Yep, yeah, that's right. Jocelyn has a follow-up question. She says, would it be okay to start doing Facebook Live on your Facebook page? I'm so shy about doing one on my profile. Can you do them on both pages? You know, you have a page, you have a business page, and you have your profile page, your personal oh. page. She's yeah. saying, can you do lives on either one? Oh, yeah. I mean, listen, at the end of the day, you can, it's, it's, you can choose what you want to do. The, I, yes. I mean, if you feel more comfortable starting on your profile page because you feel like, okay, that's all friends and family. I'm going to try a few of them there first and then get comfortable enough to before I move to my sort of business page. Of course, definitely do that. But what you want to remember is ultimately you're going to get the clients. You're going to get the, you know, the new clients, the new customers, people are paying people at your business page so it's fine to start out with your your personal page and you'll get you know what you'll get true criticism there people will your family and friends will really give you that critique you're looking for until you get comfortable but then you're going to eventually want to definitely go over to your business page because that's where you're going to you know get your clients okay so speaking about critiques when you invite can you invite people or not invite like if you have a relative that's really hateful, can you not, can you hide it from them somehow? I mean, I mean, you can, you can always block that, you know, block that. Um, I, I have a true story though. So I um, have actually seen, and this happened a lot right after, um, like right after the pandemic had started and people were going live all the time and doing Zoom lives, you would have these, um, there was actually even a name for them. I can't even remember, but they would be these people that would just come on. And as soon as you, their, their video would go on, they would show something very disturbing. If you know what I mean, like something R or X rated. And so you would be live. And the next thing you know, you know, something X rated would show up on the screen in front of all your audiences. And I've been on calls where that's happened before. So what do you do when something like that happens? Right? Like that's, horrific but as someone who's like like you have to be prepared for everything so that uncle who hates you and maybe is giving you horrible you know you, you know comments or whatever or something like that happening where you bring someone live on and they're you know you, you say hey let me bring so and so up so they can tell their story and the next thing you know it's an x-rated video or something those are all things that you you know it's live you have to be prepared for and so if that does happen with someone who hates you or dislikes you or it's, you know, a punk who wants to just try to make a fool out of you, exit out of there as fast as you can, exit that person out of there, just apologize. And most 
people who are watching understand like, hey, things like that happen. I mean, I think we've all seen on TV like news anchors, bloopers and all of that stuff. People, especially since the pandemic, when more and more of us are doing things like this virtually, people have become very sort of sensitive and understanding that things happen when you're home. I mean, I think we all saw that one of video of the gentleman who was talking to his boss who got up and he, you know, was he had the tie and the suit on and then he stood up and he forgot he only had shorts on and uh, like videos like that, that happens. So um, you just have to be prepared and just X them out immediately. So can, and when things get rolled out originally only like celebrities could do it and then only certain people get invited. At this point, can anybody with a Facebook page or profile go live whenever they want or does, is there some process you have to get approved or or anything. No, but I will tell you that if you want, that's a good point though. If you want to bring someone on the Facebook group with you, you do have to have 10,000 members or more, right? So in my Facebook group, I have um, 20, almost 20,000 members in it. See what I'm talking about? How things can happen at any minutes. Like I got my dogs back here, just acting a fool. Um, so anyways, you can, um, that's you can only bring people in if you have 10,000 members or more and that's where you bring them up sort of live to join you that's what I do with my when I have um, members of the sporting small local business members come up and promote their business so there is a little bit of a safety net that way um, where you have to have at least those members but yeah anybody can go live at any time can you elaborate on that so if you have a Facebook page that you want to go live on to bring other people on, do you have to have X followers or X connections? Yes, or you have to use one of the many, many types of apps that there are to use, like StreamYard, Zoom, many of the uh, any of the other ones, and there's tons of them. So for me, I do weekly classes, um, and I use Zoom for everything. And that's very, very easy to do. It's very easy. Okay, so do, besides Facebook Live, do you simultaneously do LinkedIn Live or YouTube Live or anything else? Yeah, so sometimes I will. Yeah, like when I do, so that's the good thing about having like a StreamYard is that you can go live on there and you can broadcast it on up to like four things. So I will broadcast it on my YouTube, my LinkedIn, my Facebook, and, and, um, and then obviously on the StreamYard link. So, and that's a really, that's, a huge positive and so Facebook is very um, like really easy you can do there's so many apps that you can use with Facebook where uh, you know you have the opportunity to bring in as many people as as you can no oh, okay so that gets around the Facebook thing yeah yeah so I've gone I've watched people when they're doing I like I'll bring up the YouTube the Facebook and the LinkedIn just to compare them and personally, I like Facebook because it has those little floating likes and hearts and stuff. I like those. I don't know why. I just like those. So, so Jocelyn has another great question. She says, how do you get rid of the jitters? I did a Facebook Live years ago, and my eyes were everywhere but the camera because I was so nervous. And before you answer that, I want to say something. When I... I was speaking in Cape Town one time. They had the camera crew from the television station there, and they wanted us to do these little bites to use to promote the thing when they played it on air. And I could not stare at the camera. It was like I, we did a bunch of takes, and it is true that some people, especially people that are borderline Asperger's, one of the symptoms is that they don't look right into the camera. And that may or may not have anything to do with Jocelyn's thing with being nervous and looking everywhere. But I just want to mention that some people just will have to really work to overcome that thing to look into the camera. Yeah, for sure. And it's not easy. I mean, they say that public speaking is one of the most, I wish I had the stat in front of me because it's a crazy stat, like top five things that give anxiety, like it's crazy. Um, and so, of course, if you're not used to doing public speaking, if you're not used to talking in front of people or talking to a camera, it's nerve wracking. And so I do a ton of public speaking training. I do a ton of like CEOs will hire me to do media training for them. 
And the, what I tell everyone is the only way that you will get comfortable is through practicing, right? Because here's the thing, you wouldn't be doing a presentation if you didn't already know the subject, right? So if someone's coming to you and saying, hey, Jocelyn, we want you to talk about how to build a website inexpensively. I know that's what Jocelyn does, so that's why I can say that. Or, or the importance of bots. Why are bots important? We need you to come and talk for 20 minutes to our computer student, IT students, about why bots are important. They wouldn't be coming to Jocelyn if they didn't know that she's already an expert in this, right? If they came to me and asked me that, I'd be like, uh, I don't have a damn clue what you're talking about. Let me do some research. Yeah, could I put it together after hours of research? Of course. But you would be able to tell I was uncomfortable because that's not what it, I don't know anything about that. Jocelyn, they're going to Jocelyn because she's already an expert in that. So I think that's the first thing that you need to remember is if someone comes to you and asks you to speak on something, anything, they're coming to you because you already know your stuff, right? So I think that's really important for people to remember. The next thing is practice, practice, practice. And I know people say that all the time, but you cannot, I cannot emphasize the importance of practicing. Practice in front of your computer, right? So if you have Zoom, you can record Zoom with just yourself and you can watch it back. I do that with all my trainings, with all of my public speaking trainings, all of my media trainings. We video all of them and we watch them back and we critique them and we talk, okay, what was, and we do it over and over and over again. Do your public, do it in front of your dog, your husband, your spouse, your friends, and just until you feel comfortable enough, because the reality is, is that, like I said, you know your stuff already. The last thing I'll say is this, don't ever write a speech, right? Don't ever write a presentation because then people are going to know you're going to be sitting there and you're going to be reading it, right? You're going to be sitting there reading it. And when that happens and you're sitting there reading, 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 you're not engaging with your audience at all. If you're not engaging with your audience, they're tuned out and they're going to just get out of there. They're not going to want to even work with you, do anything with you. They're going to be bored. So it's okay to have, you know, um, index cards. It's okay to have, you know, PowerPoint up to use. It's okay, but just to have reference points and whatnot, but don't just sit there and read a presentation. But I really think practicing, practice is the most important. And then just remembering they're coming to you or you're speaking on something that you already know. So that should give you confidence. Have that confidence to know that. Thank you. So I want to give a shout out to Jocelyn for the awesome questions. And I and we have another question. Paul said, do you recommend a minimum length for a live video, like 15 minutes or whatever? Yeah, I mean, for sure. Like, if you're going to put the effort in doing a live video and promoting it and getting people to go to that and whatnot, I would say minimum of 15 minutes. I don't think I do any trainings that are less than a half an hour. And that may sound like a lot, but when you have people, if there are people there and they're asking questions and it's engaging, that 15 minutes will go by very, very fast. Even if you don't, even if it's crickets, like we said before, 15 minutes still, because then, like I said, that's when you start asking those questions that you have prepared, that you just are assuming that they're, if the audience who's going to be watching this later will be having those questions. So 15 minutes minimum, I would say. I don't even think, I've never done a live that's been less than 30 minutes. And that goes by very, very fast. And I've never done a live ever that's more than an hour and a half and that's with like a master class where people have paid i think that you know you have to really you got to really think about people's time how much time they have when are they going to get bored and all that stuff so i would say definitely no more no less than 15 minutes probably no more than 90 max you know it's really odd i found something for the in preparing for the tip talk today um, which i should mention Jocelyn is joining us in the Bishop Sugar Mastermind community for a text chat where you can ask all the questions you'll think of when we're done here. And you can come and engage with her and talk with all the other influencers that hang out in the Blogger Mastermind. You do have to join the Mastermind, but it is free. You just go to bizsugar.com slash mastermind and, or click on the tab that says mastermind and just put in your name and email. And, you're, and you can get in and come and ask questions. And so what's really interesting is I found someone who said that the optimum length for a Facebook Live, Susan Moeller, is seven minutes, which amazed me. I know, I, I know people that do one hour shows every week. 
I don't think I know anybody that does seven minute lives. So that's I, interesting. Yeah. What was her reasoning behind? I've never heard of. I don't know. I'll have to go read it. I'll, I'm yeah. going to share that link during tip talk. It's how to get the most from your Facebook live videos. And she said seven minutes and I went, really? <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's surprising. I'd love to hear her reasoning behind that. So I'm sending, um, Tiffany has asked for the, that link to join the mastermind. Okay, and in case anyone has issues, you can email me. There you go. And I will help you get in, make sure you get there. And uh, because we can have a really great discussion and get even more resources from, from um, everyone, not just from the members. And anyway, it's one of those days. So do we have more questions? And I did ask everybody if they wanted to take the poll. Not everybody took it, but I am going to publish the results so everyone can see it. And I'm back to the questions. I hope we didn't miss anyone. All right, I think that's good. So let's see, is there anything else we want to talk about before we let you go and then rejoin? Oh, the Tip Talk chat starts in about an hour, a little over an hour from now. So we'll give you a break so you can grab something to eat, get some coffee or whatever, and then you can come in and, and talk to us all at the, chip, at the tip top. If you can type, you can do it. Oops. Um, I'm just gonna put, I was gonna put my... Oh yeah, let's get your, your slideshow back up there oh, so that oh. people know how to reach you. And there's also a blog post also on the Biz Sugar blog which is at blog.bizsugar.com. We have a webinars tab. And if you click on that, it's got links to all of our past webinars, including this one. And that is where the video replay will be embedded. We'll also email it to you because you registered. But um, you can always find it on the blog in the webinars tab. And there's, there's the Facebook groups. The, you definitely got to join the Support Your Business group. It's a really good group, and they're working hard to make it better. Yeah. And you got a free 30 minute consultation coming. That's a great deal. I didn't even know about that. That's a surprise. Yep. Yep. So take me up on it. Yeah, for sure. And like you said, the Facebook group on the front, the top one is the free one. The second one is um, the 7188 a year. And then, but everything that you need to know is at cindygersh.com. Everything. So the results of this. 50% of the people that responded to the poll have done a Facebook Live. So that's what always happens. The, the really sharp people who are on top of things come to the webinars so they can ask questions and interact and become visible to other people. And lots of people don't. Um, but everyone, well, a lot, some people have been guests. And 50%, I'm surprised. That's really high. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so I would say to the others, like, give it a shot, right? Give it a shot. I mean, even if it's just on your own personal page, like Jocelyn said, to try it and see, see what happens, right? I, like I said, I think people are much more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They're, they understand, they're like, they're much more understanding now when things happen in the background or you make a mistake or you forget something or whatnot, because that's life now. And this is the virtual world we're living in. So it was different 20 years ago or even longer dating myself when I was a reporter, like you couldn't make a mistake at all in a live shot. But now it's, it's kind of, you, it's fine. People don't care as much. But sometimes the, that's what makes the video and they go viral. That's, like the, you're right. the person on a live video whose child came wandering in. And then the wife scoots in and grabs the child and the dog, I think. I forget. Anyway, it was really cute, and it went viral. And so you could go viral because something cute happened that you didn't plan. The other thing to remember is, although it is live and somebody could maybe grab it, there's a delete button, right? Mm -hmm. And so another tip is make videos that aren't live and practice that way and get comfortable. And you can edit those and only publish the ones you really like. And then after you've made some of those and you get more comfortable, then you can do a live. And like I said, if you hate it, delete it afterwards, mm -hmm. right? I mean, yeah, somebody might grab it. 
but they, they probably won't. How many people download videos off the internet? Right. I mean, I, I don't, but some right. people might. But anyway, the odds are it's not going to, not that many people are going to see it, right? When you first get started, even like I said, I know people that do a weekly show and they're very well known and there's two of them and they banner back and forth and they have good shows, but there's really not that many attendees. So don't get worried if like only a couple people see it. It takes time. Like the people I know with a million, million people following them on YouTube, but when they go live, they get dozens of people or hundreds of people. They've been doing this a long time. It didn't happen overnight. And so everybody should just jump in and go for it. That's right. And have some faith in yourself. Have some confidence in yourself. Like, like I keep saying, you know what you're talking about. You are the expert, no matter what you're talking Even if you're talking about, I don't know, Hello Kitty dolls or, you know, whatever. You wouldn't be talking about it if you weren't passionate about it. So go for it. Love this video. It's really great. We are going to process it and put it in that blog post. And maybe I'll even could get it done before the tip talk. Maybe, might not. But anyway, everybody come talk to us at the tip talk in the mastermind and go see Cindy's, Cindy's um, group. Please. So you can keep in that. touch and get a whole lot more cool stuff. She's got some resources in there and some, what do they call that at the top? Files, courses. Oh, oh, yeah, the files. Yep, lots of files with lots of good freebie information. Right, lots of freebies in there. So yep. we can't wait to see you all there. Thank you so much, Cindy. Thank you. It was great. Thanks, everyone, who joined as well. And hopefully we'll see you on um, the Big Sugar in just a little bit. Bye-bye.